Okay, let me show you the contents of this uh, video. First, I will introduce the topic and I will discuss about the applications of Wall's Hadamard transform. Then I will explain the forward and inverse Wall's Hadamard transform for one dimensional signals. Uh, then I will talk about the Hadamard matrix and Wall's matrix and their ordering. And uh, then we will see the Wall's Hadamard transform for two dimensional signals, I mean images. After that, I will uh, show you one example where uh, I will compute the uh, tr forward transform coefficients for one dimensional signal. Then we will see another example where I will compute uh, uh, Wall's Hadamard transform for 2D signals, I mean images. And uh, later uh, we will see uh, the fast algorithms uh, which are available for computing this uh, WHT. And in the last, I will explain one MATLAB code uh, that will show you uh, the implementation of the filtering of noisy ECG signal using uh, WHT. And uh, I will explain one more MATLAB code that will show you the image compression using Wall's Hadamard transform. So let's go ahead. Uh, the Wall's Hadamard transform is uh, a non sinusoidal orthogonal transformation technique where a signal is decomposed into a set of basis functions uh, that is similar to the harmonics in Fourier. So these uh, basis functions are known as the Wall's functions. These are rectangular square waves having the values plus 1 or minus 1. So Wall's Hadamard transform is also known as the Hadamard transform only only Wall's transform or Wall's Fourier transform. So like FFT, the Wall's Hadamard transform also uh, has the fast version uh, which is known as the fast Wall's Hadamard transform, I mean FWHT. So I will talk about this fast transform later in this uh, video tutorial. Uh, here in this figure, you can see that in Fourier, uh, we have a signal which is decomposed into its number of harmonics uh, as you can see in this figure. So these harmonics are actually the continuous waves uh, of sine and cosine. And if you add all these uh, harmonics, you get your uh, signal back. In similar manner, uh, in the waltz hadamard transform, uh, instead of these continuous sine and cosine, we have the discrete waltz functions as you can see. Uh, these are the rectangular waves having the uh, plus 1 and minus 1 values as I said. So if you add all these functions together, uh, you get your synthesized signal back. So that is a similarity between the Fourier and the Wall's Hadamard transform. And let's see some applications. The Wall's Hadamard transform actually uh, is very popular and have number of applications such as image processing, speech processing, signal filtering, signal and image compression, power spectrum analysis and spread spectrum analysis. So in this uh, video tutorial, I will uh, explain the signal filtering and the image compression with help of the MATLAB at the end of this video tutorial. So now let's see the forward and inverse walls had a transform. So both forward and the inverse transform are actually the symmetric transform. Therefore, uh, they use the identical calculation process. So with help of these equations, you can go for uh, forward and inverse transform. So here uh, uh, you have a signal xt of length n, then you can find the Wall's Hadamard transform coefficients yn with help of these equations 1 upon n sigma i equal to 1 to n, your signal samples multiplied with these uh, Wall's functions. And uh, this is how you can get your signal back with the inverse transform, okay. So walls and i are actually the walls functions, which are your discrete square waves having plus 1 and minus 1 values as I have shown in the previous slide. Uh, to compute uh, this transform, uh, actually the length of the signal, I mean the n must be in the power of 2. So that is the requirement. So I mean n must be, uh, uh, must be expressed uh, in power of 2. So if signal length, let's say, is not in the power of 2, then it can be padded with the zeros to make it complete in power of 2. So the equation of a forward transform can be computed by the simple matrix multiplication. So let for a signal xt, which has, let's say, n number of samples, then forward transform can be found by this equation. So here you can see that y equal to 1 upon n, uh, there is a one matrix HN multiplied this signal X. 
So this is more uh, elaborated. Here you can see that all the coefficient values y1 to yn you can find by this matrix operation. So here uh, this uh, hn matrix is known as the Hadamard matrix. Okay. So here you can see this Hadamard matrix is a, a square matrix of size n by n. And the inverse uh, transform you can achieve by this matrix equation. So obviously your signal x you can get uh, back by this operation. So hn inverse into y. But here hn inverse becomes equal to hn uh, because uh, this uh, hn is orthogonal and involutory. So for this case the inverse and the transpose both are equal to the matrix itself. So that makes the calculation very simple. So this is uh, how you can uh, get your signal back. So you simply multiply these all transform coefficients with the Hadamard matrix again, you get your signal back. So, so from these uh, matrix equations, uh, I mean uh, equation four and six, we can see that the forward and inverse transform uh, have the same mathematical operations. So now let's see what is this uh, Hadamard matrix and how we can achieve this matrix. So the Hadamard matrix actually is a square matrix uh, having size either 2 by 2, 4 by 4, 8 by 8, etc. Uh, that always be in the dimensions uh, in the form of 2 power n. So the first order Hadamard matrix H1 is given by this matrix that is 1, 1 and minus 1. And the second order uh, Hadamard matrix H2 is given by this matrix you can see. And uh, how we achieve this H2? Actually, this H2 is achieved from the matrix H1 by this operation. So when we go for uh, this uh, Kronecker product of this H1, we get this matrix H2. So let's see what is this Kronecker product. So this Kronecker product actually is uh, obtained by this uh, operation, which is very simple. So here the whole matrix B is multiplied with the elements of A. So by this operation, you can get the H2 from H1. And uh, the higher order Hadamard matrix HN can be also obtained by with the same rule. And this is the generalization of that rule. So HN equal to H1 chronicle product HN minus one. So with the similar iteration rule, the matrix H3 can be obtained uh, like this. So H3 obviously will be the H1 Kronecker product of H2. So H2 we have already calculated in the previous slide. So if we uh, do the Kronecker product with the H1, we get this matrix. So that is the Hadamard matrix of order three. And that is of course the eight by eight matrix. So this shows that uh, uh, how we can generate Hadamard matrix of any size. And now let's see uh, the generation of the walls matrix from the Hadamard matrix. So now consider uh, a Hadamard matrix H2, which is a four by four square matrix. Now here you can see that number of the sign changes, uh, which is also known as the natural ordering. So in the first row, the number of sign changes uh, is zero. And in the second row, the num number of sign changes are three. I mean the plus one to minus one, minus one to plus one, and then plus one to minus one. So total number of sign changes are three. Similarly, in the third row, it's one, and in last row, it is two. So this is uh, actually the Hadamard matrix, which has uh, the natural ordering of uh, uh, sign changes. If I can arrange all rearrange all these rows in increasing number of uh, sign changes like this 0 1 2 3 so I have reordered all these uh, uh, rows then uh, this matrix becomes W I mean from S to W so this is known as a walls matrix okay so and this uh, ordering is known as the sequency ordering so walls matrix actually generated from the Hadamard matrix so uh, if I use this walls matrix in uh, the transform, so then this transform will be known as the walls transform in place of the Hadamard transform. 
okay so that is the relationship between the hadamard and wall's transform so since matrix uh, are same one matrix is obtained from another that's why uh, this transform uh, is combinedly known as a wall's hadamard transform there is another uh, ordering uh, which is known as the dyadic ordering uh, which is uh, in the order of the gray coat generation so here you can see uh, this example so here the rows are rearranged in this sequence 0 1 3 2 so that is of course a gray coat order so this is known as the dyadic uh, uh, ordering and in this example you can see a 32 by 32 uh, matrix uh, so this is uh, with the natural ordering so of course it is your uh, hadamard matrix this is uh, 32 by 32 hadamard, hadamard matrix and uh, here uh, after the sequence c ordering this becomes a wall's matrix so this becomes a wall's matrix and uh, this uh, is actually uh, having the dyadic ordering i mean the gray coat ordering so here you can uh, visually compare that how these uh, three matrices look like okay and uh, now let's see wall's hadamard transform for images so uh, for 2d signals i mean images of uh, let's say size n by n the forward walls had a transform can be obtained by this matrix equations so y equal to 1 upon n square your hadamard matrix h multiplied with this uh, image x and then h so here you can see that x is the input image y is of course the output transformation matrix and h is the hadamard or walls matrix if your image is of size m by n then instead of 1 upon n square you have to write uh, 1 upon m n okay uh, but keep remember that uh, both m and n must be in the power of 2 if not then you have to pad with zeros to make it complete in power of 2 and the inverse transform uh, is a similar operation and you can achieve by this equation uh, uh, since uh, this uh, transform is a separable transform uh, therefore, the for two dimensional signal assignment images, the same uh, forward and inverse operation can be achieved by row wise and column wise operations uh, of a one dimensional uh, transform to achieve the two dimensional transform. So, that we will see later. Uh, so, now let us see one uh, example that how to compute the wall side of a transform of one dimensional signal. So let's see this is my signal 1 5 minus 3 2 having four samples uh, so to convert this into the transform uh, i need the h2 matrix i mean uh, of size 4 by 4 so then uh, i will get this transformation by this equation so 1 upon n your hadamard matrix and then my signal matrix xn therefore i can write this equation like this so 1 upon 4 had a matrix of order 2 I mean 4 by 4 and this is my signal samples uh, multiplying uh, these matrices I get this answer so that is y equal to 1.25 minus 2.25 1.75 uh, and 0 0.25 so these four values are actually a representation of your hadamard transform coefficients you can get your signal back also by this operation so you multiply this uh, y uh, with the hadamard matrix again you get your signal back so that is the inverse transform so the same thing you can achieve in the matlab also with help of this code so i have written this code so x is defined 1 5 minus 3 and 2 the hadamard matrix i mean this matrix is uh, generated by this command h equal to hadamard 4 so 4 by 4 matrix will be generated and then this uh, equation is implemented here so 1 by 4 h and x uh, so in the y you will see all your uh, these uh, coefficient values will be stored so that you can check easily in the matlab and uh, this is your inverse transform so you are getting your x back simply multiplying y with your hadamard matrix again so this is how you can achieve uh, the same operation in the MATLAB. Uh, here uh, I have used these equations. The MATLAB also has uh, the inbuilt functions like uh, FWHT and IFWHT. So with help of these uh, two inbuilt functions, you can obtain the same thing again like this. So I uh, request you to try this code in the MATLAB and verify all these results. 
here I am not running this code. Okay, uh, now let me show you the case of the two dimensional signal. Uh, consider this image segment i x y which is uh, of size 4 by 4 so n equal to 4 and uh, we can take uh, its forward transform by this equation so y equal to 1 upon n square h i h so substituting all these three matrices uh, 1 upon n square that is 1 upon 16 as n equal to 4 and uh, this is your h this is i and this is h so when you multiply all these three matrices you will get this output matrix y uh, which is carrying the hadamard coefficient. So, this is the case of forward transform and now if you want, uh, want to back your image segment uh, then you can go for the inverse transform. So, let us see how you can achieve that. So, this is the equation for inverse transform that is uh, i recovered equal to h y h. So, substituting all these three matrices I mean this is your h this is the uh, uh, hadamard coefficient matrix. Uh, which we obtained during the forward transform and this is the H matrix again. So, multiplying these three matrices you get your MA segment back. So, that is the case of your inverse transform and uh, MATLAB has actually the no inbuilt function for two dimensional uh, Hadamard transform. Therefore, we have to do the row wise and column wise one dimensional transformation. Also because uh, this Hadamard transform is a separable transform so you can do it. Right. So, this is the corresponding MATLAB code. So, first uh, in the first segment I am uh, doing this operation with simple fundamental equations which I have just shown you. So, this is your image segment and here you are generating the head, uh, your Hadamard matrix of order 4 and this is how you are calculating your uh, transformation matrix I mean the forward transform. So, all transform coefficients will go into the y. And this is how you are getting your uh, image segment back with the inverse transform. So, this is uh, this uh, calculation I have already shown you. You can verify these results in the MATLAB. And now, uh, this is what uh, I have done here since as I said MATLAB has no two dimensional uh, uh, transform uh, function. So, you have to do the one dimensional transform uh, first row wise and then column wise. So, here I am doing so, first I am doing the column wise operation on this MA segment i. So, whatever our output I achieve, I am uh, performing the row wise operation on this uh, output. First, you have to tr uh, transpose it uh, so that uh, the row wise operation can be achieved instead of column wise. So, in YR, we are getting the output and uh, since it is already rotated, so you have to uh, take it back in its position by taking transpose again. So, in yy you are getting your forward transform coefficients. So, here uh, the uh, y which is computed in this segment will be same as yy computed in this segment. So, you can verify this result and this is how you are taking the inverse transform. So, again taking inverse transform of y and uh, whatever you get output you just uh, transpose it and take inverse transform again of it. So, I mean I am doing the similar operation uh, uh, in both the sections I mean in forward as well as in reverse uh, or inverse section. So, in uh, IRR you are getting the your MA segment. So, you can verify the results. So, whatever you are uh, getting in IR the same you are getting in IRR in this case. So, this is how you can compute uh, the two dimensional uh, walls uh, had a transform and uh, now let us see uh, the fast algorithm to compute uh, the walls had a transform. So, similar to the Kuletaki algorithm I think you are aware with this uh, which is used uh, in computing FFT fast for a transform. The fast walls had a transform is also developed with the same complexity that is n log n. Actually, this uses only the addition and subtraction, no multiplication is used. So, in, in the previous cases, in the matrix multiplications, you have seen that we have done addition, subtraction and multiplication, all the three operations. But in this case, you will perform only the addition and subtraction. So, that is why this is making the computation faster. So, let us see how it is achieved. So, this is a well uh, uh, known 
structure which is known as a butterfly structure which was proposed by the Kula and Chucky in the competition of the FFT. So same is utilized here. So let's say this is your input signal 10100110. So uh, here with the blues we are doing the plus operation and with the red we are doing the minus operation. So I mean blue is representing plus and red is representing the minus. So obviously you can see that how we achieve this first value the 1 added with this 0. So 1 and 0 is 1. Similarly the second value 0 plus 1 is 1 and how we achieve this 2 this is 1 added with this 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2. Okay and here 0 plus 0 is 0. So similarly uh, we achieved uh, these values also but here the operation is subtraction. So the first one is plus 1 uh, subtracted 0 so that is 1 in the second which is minus 1 because this is a 0 so 0 minus 1 is minus 1 and then 1 minus 1 is 0 and then 0 minus 0 is 0 so in similar manner we achieve all these uh, uh, values and in the last stage where we get this uh, 2 by 2 operation so that is your butterfly actually we get this uh, as a final result so 420 minus 20202 so in this uh, example you can see that we have not performed any multiplication okay we have performed only the addition and subtraction that's why this algorithm becomes faster so the matlab's inbuilt functions which i have just shown in the previous slides the fwht and i fwst these two functions are actually based on this uh, fast algorithm okay so now let's see the matlab code to implement the signal filtering with help of this uh, fast walls hadamard transform so here uh, i'm taking one ecg signal so i'm loading this ecg signal from one mat file dot mat file uh, which is already there in my current directory and here i am just uh, extracting uh, the length of uh, the signal which is corresponding to the 2 power n. Actually this signal is of uh, 5000 samples. So but 5000 is not in the power of 2. So I am just uh, taking 4096 uh, uh, samples. So that is in the order of uh, 2 power n. And uh, now I am adding the noise to make it noisy. So some random noise is added with this having strength 0.1 and then uh, taking this uh, walls had a transform so my transform coefficients now go to this variable y taking one backup for plotting and uh, here what i'm doing i'm just uh, discarding the high higher coefficient so i'm uh, discarding the coefficients from 500 uh, till end uh, and uh, just uh, getting only the initial part of the coefficients and taking inverse of it i am getting my signal back so just by removing the higher order coefficients i am achieving the signal smoothing or the filtering and here all uh, plot functions are used uh, the noisy ecg signal is plotted and then its corresponding hadamard coefficients are plotted then uh, truncated hadamard coefficients are plotted i mean after the uh, truncating or uh, removing those higher order coefficients and then this is a filtered ECG signal. So I can run this program in the MATLAB and I will show you that uh, what type of output I achieve in the MATLAB. So this program I have already written. Uh, simply let me uh, run this program. Okay so uh, this is the output so here in this case you can see that this is a noisy ECG signal you can see lots of noise and these are the corresponding hadamard transform coefficients. So what I am doing I am just discarding uh, the higher order coefficients uh, after 500 okay so I have just discarded all the coefficients from 500 till end uh, I am in 4096 and with this remaining coefficients I am taking the inverse transform and this is what I achieve. So here you can compare these two signals that this is quite noisy and what I achieve is uh, uh, a smooth version I mean the filtered version of this signal. So in the second figure you can uh, uh, see both the functions uh, with overlapping so it gives a good idea I mean the, your red one is a filtered signal and blue one is a noisy signal. So this is how you can achieve 
the filtering or smoothing of a noisy signal uh, in MATLAB with help of uh, this uh, uh, Wall's Hadamard transform. So now let's go for one more example uh, that is uh, of the image compression. So as I said that uh, this Wall's Hadamard transform has very good energy compaction property. Energy compaction. Energy compaction means uh, very few coefficients have uh, the maximum part of the energy um, so that you can ignore or zero out uh, uh, a large number of coefficients from the transform matrix. That's why you can achieve the compression of the input image. So let's understand this code. So first I am reading uh, uh, my input image so I can select any grayscale image. Uh, after executing this UI get file, you will get a system dialog box from where you can choose your file. So your uh, input image goes to this IMG variable and here I'm taking the size of it and then I'm making a double uh, format that will be used uh, using transformation. So now uh, I'm taking the forward transform. So uh, I'm using the MATLAB inbuilt function FWHT so that will go to uh, variable yc. Since MATLAB has as I said no two dimensional uh, uh, function so you have to do this column wise and row wise operation okay. So the final uh, transform coefficients will go into the mat, uh, variable y. Uh, taking just a backup for display purpose and this is uh, where you are uh, discarding your uh, coefficients. So since I'm taking, let's say, uh, an image of uh, 512 and 512 size, so I will get the coefficient matrix of same size, 512 by 512. So what I'm doing here that I'm discarding all the uh, coefficients uh, from 256 to uh, R, that means 512 and 256 to two, uh, 512. I mean, I'm discarding this right bottom corner. So all these coefficients are zeroed out. So the, these are the remaining coefficients. So with these remaining coefficients, I'm taking inverse uh, transform, again the row wise and column wise operation. And uh, I'm getting my image back into the IMGR. That is in the double format. So converting it into the unsaid integer eight format. And then I'm writing this image to my current directory with this name. So I can compare uh, the uh, image before transformation and after transformation their sizes. So for size compa uh, comparison, I'm writing this image. And here uh, you can uh, find the PSNR between uh, the original image and the compressed image. So you will have the idea about the quality. And uh, here all the display commands are written. So I am plotting the original image, uh, its uh, Hadamard coefficients, then truncated Hadamard coefficients and then final compressed image. So you can have the better idea about uh, this process. So let me run this program in uh, MATLAB and uh, let me show you the output. So this program is already here. So I'm just pressing this run button. So it is asking me to choose uh, the image so I can choose uh, let's say Lina image and this is the output you can see. So this is your original image and these are all Hadamard coefficients of this image okay. So here in the top left corner you can see that large coefficients are here and uh, in this uh, bottom uh, right uh, corner you, you see more darkness that means the uh, coefficients here are very small in the magnitude. So it is easy to discard them. So simply uh, here I'm discarding this uh, uh, one quarter. I mean this is square of size 256 by 256 uh, from the uh, bottom right corner. So I'm discarding or zeroing out all these coefficients. So with the remaining coefficients I'm taking inverse transform and this is what I achieve and that is your compressed image. So if you want to see the uh, quality of the compressed image, I can show you just by zooming uh, these images. So let me show you these images. So this is your original image. You can see the quality. 
and now let me show you the compressed image and this is a compressed image so visually there is almost no difference okay so you can see that how effectively and efficiently this compression is working but let me see whether i'm getting the compression or not uh, so for that i have to go for my current directory so this is my original image lena and let's see and its size is 113 kb you can see in this uh, display and this is uh, uh, my compressed image and let me see the size and its size is only the 32 kb so the compression i achieved from 113 to 32 kb so it's a good compression and still i'm getting a very quality output so in the uh, command prompt you can see that psnr is also displayed here so that is 41.73 so that is a good value of the psnr so this is how uh, the compression uh, using this uh, wall sediment transform is uh, working effectively now let me show you once again with some uh, other uh, image so let me rerun the program and uh, let me select this paper image and this is the output again you can see that output is uh, almost same in the visual quality as compared to the original one and uh, now let me show you the psnr values this is 38.79 and uh, let's see the compression so my original image is peppers and its size is 158 kb and this is the compressed one and its size is only 32 kb so i'm again getting the huge compression from 158 to 32 kb so here you can see that without losing the visual quality of the image your wall sediment transform based compression is working very effectively efficiently so that's the beauty of wall sediment transform uh, so you have seen its application in the signal filtering as well as in the image compression i hope you have enjoyed this video so that's it for this video tutorial. Thank you.